There's a load of compromising on the road to my horizon. But I want to be where the lights are shining on me like a rhinestone cowboy. Riding a horse in a star-spangled rodeo like a rhinestone cowboy. Getting cards and letters from people I don't even know. And offers coming over the phone. Trying something new. Normally I get off at the exit before this, but if I go down two or three exits, I actually cut out a whole bunch of traffic light stop and go action. And now that I'm feeling more comfortable riding the scooter at highway speeds, I'm gonna give it a shot. Plus it's Saturday and there's not a lot of people on the road. People aren't driving too fast, so it's not too bad. Only going 60 and 65, and I'm obviously keeping up with the people in front of me. It's been about four months since I started riding, and I know that's basically nothing for a lot of people. But I also I like to um, kind of reflect back on where I've come every month or so, and lately it's been even more kind of pronounced to me how far I've come because I've been riding on the highway a lot. And I used to be super paranoid on the highway. In fact, I used to have to have, I used to have panic attacks on the highway, highway, which is why I started kind of uh, what I called uh, exit hopping. Like I'd get on and get off. The way the exits work, at least on the road that I ride on, um, usually there's an on ramp and then an off ramp right after it. So I would go up and get on and get off, and it would allow me to accelerate a little bit and miss the um, stoplights or a few stoplights anyway. But lately, I've been just riding on the highway. And in fact, um, yeah, I feel pretty comfortable riding at 65, 70 miles an hour. Now the scooter, uh, around 70, depending on the day and the wind conditions, feels a little unstable, but not horrible. One of the things I realized uh, recently as well is that I used to think the scooter was super unstable, especially in windy conditions. I think what I, what I was doing a lot of times was I was supporting myself on the handlebars and of course every time you hit a bump or something and that goes through your body and it goes into the handlebars and gets amplified and just makes everything feel less stable. Now I know I, I, now I feel like I've been supporting my body with my core a little bit more which is probably why my back has been bothering me because I really don't have a core which is why I gotta work out. I really need to get on that too. Been slacking, slacking on the workouts. So I used to go just ride around on the weekends, just for the fun of it. And I still want to get out and ride. I just I get really bored when I go out and ride just for no reason. So I've been trying to think of places that I've always wanted to go see or or go to so that's what I'm doing right now I'm heading down to end of an ear which is a music store sorry not a music I guess it is a music store it's a record store here in Austin um, it's kind of south Austin which I've always kind of avoided driving down to because it makes for a really long drive but anyway I want to go for a long ride today anyway um, yeah because nothing says you're a hipster like black frame glasses riding a scooter having a beard, and collecting vinyl. I collect vinyl, what can I tell you? All I need is the skinny jeans, but still too fat for those. Not for the record, I'm not trying to be a hipster. I have zero desire to be a hipster, but every time I tell people what I'm into, it just cracks me up because I sound like a hipster. I wonder if just a collection of your interests makes you a hipster, or is it like a whole mentality? I don't know. I don't hang out in coffee shops. I don't drink craft beer. Don't really eat anything artisanal. I, mean, I do do a lot of things, like go to the. I don't go to the farmers market that often, but I go every once in a while. I like handmade things. They're cool. But I'm also a tech nerd, so I'm kind of a nerdster the thing. I think I just made that up. 
Oh well. Is somebody on a scooter? Off to yoga, I guess. So I was watching Moto Mumbles the other day, which is a uh, one hour kind of Q&A round table discussion that Walterific, Motornosity, and Chase on Two Wheels do. I think they do it on Wednesdays. And um, they were talking about, you know, whether or not you wave to other people or not. And Chase on Two Wheels said he waves to everybody but scooters. And he said the only reason he doesn't is because scooters don't wave back. And I was kind of a little pissed at first. Not pissed, but, you know, kind of like, that sucks. But then I realized he's right. I mean, most scooter riders aren't really into, for lack of a better term, the lifestyle or the culture. And, um, you know, I see a lot of knuckleheads riding scooters, and I pointed them out on these videos. And I probably will continue to point them out. I'll continue to point out bad drivers and bad motorcyclists and bad scooter riders but just kind of makes me want to even more be a really good ambassador for the scooter community at least while I'm riding a scooter or even the motorcycle community once I get a motorcycle you know all gear all the time you know wave to people be nice be friendly don't do stupid things I used to not wave to people when I first started. Just It was kind of a social experiment for me. I wanted to see who would wave back. But then I was kind of like... But then I started thinking, you know, I should probably wave to them, and if I wave to them, maybe they'll wave back. <laughs> it is kind of that... Um, a bit of, like, wave chicken when you see another uh, person riding a two-wheel vehicle. Who's going to wave first? <laughs> 